What's going on, everybody? Welcome to another edition of Gen Sports Corner. Back at you, February 28th, 2019. You guys know exactly why I'm here. Because the Philadelphia Phillies have made it official. They have just signed Bryce Harper to a 13-year, $330 million deal. He is in the fold, finally. He made that trip up the turnpike from D.C., now he's in the city of brotherly love, and he's going to make it rain over the fence. Home runs all day. And I'm telling you right now, this lineup, this lineup right here is looking hella different and is looking really, really good in terms of what they bring. You look at this whole offseason with the Phillies, they made the tra- trade for Gene Segura from the Mariners. Not only did they, did they get a gold glove shortstop who also hits for average they were also able to unload the Carlos Santana contract and then be able to open up that slot at first base now that Santana's gone so that they can move Reese Hoskins back to his natural position at first base secondly you made the trade for JT Realmuto I believe one to two weeks ago right from the Miami Marlins who is arguably and may be the best catcher in baseball, 28 years old, in his prime right now. Big move. Hits for average, good defense, just an overall really, really, really talented player. And then the cherry on top, you weren't able to get Manny Machado, who took the big money to go out to the San Diego Padres. But you were able to get Bryce Harper, you were able to land a guy that brings you power, brings you average, and brings you a high OPS, on base percentage plus slugging. And to me, that's that's one of the biggest stats in baseball that's translatable to how good a player actually is and what he brings to you on a day in and day out basis. And I'm going to make this, I'm going to keep this video pretty brief, but I really want to go into Bryce Harper's statistics so that you guys get a gauge for exactly how good this dude actually is. Not only does he pass the eye test with how hard he hits the ball and how much passion he plays with in the outfield on defense, but just how efficient and, and devastating at the plate this guy really is, especially at Citizens Bank's Park. So... Looking at Bryce Harper, he came up into the majors 2012 with the Washington Nationals. He was drafted by them. And just for a little context, OPS is a combination of on-base percentage, how often you get on base, whether it's through a hit or by walks, plus your slugging percentage. Um, And slugging percentage is based off how, how many singles, doubles, triples, and home runs you hit. And the more extra base hits you're getting, meaning doubles, triples, and obviously um, home runs, the higher your slugging percentage is going to be. And if you're hitting a lot of home runs and doubles, those are weighted more than just being a singles hitter. If you hit a lot of singles, your slugging percentage isn't going to be high because you're hitting for for average, but you're not you're not you're not driving in a whole lot of runs. In or you're not putting yourself in position to be um, driven in by the next person after you. So a high. So for OPS, uh, average OPS is anywhere from. We'll go by percentages. So instead of saying 0.7, I'll just say 700 on a scale of of um, let's say 500 up to 900 and above. So 700 to 766. That that uh, t- typifies an average player. 766 to 833, that suggests that you're above average. 833 to 899 or 900, which suggests that you're very, very good. Anything above 900, you are flat out great. You are just a flat out great player. And you are a rarity, my friend. So looking at Bryce Harper's statistics... We can just look at his his rookie season. 
2012, 19 years old, came up, hit 270 for a batting average, 22 home runs, 59 RBI, not too bad, but his OPS was 817. Right off the rip, he had an OPS of 817, which suggests that he's an above average player as a rookie. That is really good, only 19 years old. His slugging percentage was 477. I like that. On base percentage, 340, not, not bad. Average. Next year, he hits 274, but that OPS jumps up to 854. Now all of a sudden, you're a very good player in just your second season. Third year, had an average year. Third year was average. Um, hit 273, OPS of, of 780, 768. Had an average season. But after that, the numbers really pop off the charts. His fourth year, 2015, he hit 330 for average. Had an on-base percentage of 460. Had a slugging percentage of 649, which is insane. And had an OPS of, and I'm not, this is not a typo, 1,009. Those, the batting, the on-base percentage, slugging percentage, and OPS were all tops in the league. That is incredible. Like, you look at an OPS of 1,009, or let's say 1.109, however you want to put it contextually. The only people, you you look at career OPS for some of the top players in, in in baseball history. The only person that averaged an OPS of 1.1 or above were Ted Williams and Babe Ruth. That should give you some context for, I know it's just one season, but to give you some context for just how good, how special he was that year. And he's averaging 900 for his OPS all the time. So we got a special player. I'm excited. I'm hyped. You know, I'm going to leave it at that. Um, Let me know what you guys think. And, man, let's get ready for some baseball, man. Philly sports is popping right now. Sixers, Phillies, Eagles, and the Flyers are going to come up. Things are really getting getting crazy here. So, um, yeah, that's it for now. I appreciate, as always, like, like, subscribe, and share. And until next time, I'll catch y'all later.